If you haven't already watched my top 15 most underrated roller coasters video, go check it out. I uploaded that one in February, but have since realized that there are so many other coasters I've been on that don't get enough love. I have ridden 672 coasters across 10 different countries as of this video's recording. Some of these have absolutely epic reputations and end up living up to the hype, but others I find to be overrated and some I'd consider underrated. Today we'll be talking about just that. I've ridden some stupidly underrated roller coasters that should be getting much more positive attention than they currently are. Now, before we begin, I'll only be including a handful of coasters from Europe since I've already uploaded a video on the top 15 most underrated European roller coasters. That one I released in early January and I'd certainly recommend you check it out. I want to focus on mostly other locations in this list but we'll still highlight a few on the continent. Alright, let's dive in. Here's 15 more of the most underrated coasters I've ridden. Number 15, the Vacoma Flying Dutchman. There are two of these left in operation and both reside within the United States of America. One is Batwing at Six Flags America in Maryland which I'd say definitely gets the most love between the two. The other is Nighthawk at Carowinds in the Carolinas which according to most coasters coaster enthusiast is a straight up awful ride. These were the first generation of flying coasters Vacoma tackled, and while the modern flyer at Fantasyland is obviously a much better experience, this is still good fun. Batwing is a ride I have very little complaints for. It's slightly uncomfortable, but the forces are all spectacular. Nighthawk is pretty much the same story, although it's got a slightly weaker finale. The layouts are mostly the same, and they ride more or less the same, which is why I'm left scratching my head when Batwing receives praise and Nighthawk receives hate. Even if Nighthawk didn't exist though, Batwing would still have found its way on this list. Number 14, Wicked at Lagoon. Lagoon is a park well known for a really cool hyper coaster called Cannibal, but what many don't realize is that they have another standout ride that rounds out a terrific one-two punch. Wicked is a zero tower coaster, one of only two in the world and the only one to feature a launch rather than a lift hill. The launch was built into a vertical top hat which also features a vertical drop as well. This sequence of elements along with everything else in the first half is truly some of the most underrated coaster track I've ever experienced. However, once you hit the mid-course break run, the ride sort of dies. I think that's why Wicked doesn't get more praise in this community. When there's a dull second half and an amazing first half, what is the community going to think of? Of course the elements that fall flat. But as far as I'm concerned, Wicked is another great reason to book a ticket to Utah and check out this historic amusement park. Number 13, Wavebreaker the Rescue Coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio. The Intamin Family Launch Coaster as a whole is one that I found to be very underrated. Wavebreaker was the first one I'd ever ridden and it's what really got me on the hype train. Ironically, of them all, it seems like Wavebreaker gets left in the dust and sometimes even receives a lot of hate. Sure, it's not the most intense, but that's not really the point of these rides at all. The coaster has two surprisingly punchy launches, graceful transitions, a fun seating setup, and a beautiful location over the water. I'm really excited to see a similar ride come to my home park, SeaWorld San Diego. Number 12, Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. I've never been sure what's going on with this ride. I feel like back when I first became a coaster enthusiast several years ago, people had only good things to say about Lightning Racer. These days, you hear nothing but crap about this coaster. When you ride it, you can definitely make out that it's one of the tamer GCIs on this scale, but that doesn't make it a bad ride at all. It's one of the best coasters out there to appreciate that dueling element where you race a train side by side. It's still quite smooth, it's got a handful of airtime moments, and though it dies out towards the end, I've always found the layout to be fun. Stick a friend on the other train and race them, and I don't see how you could get off this thing without a smile on your face. Number 11, Draukong at Jura Summerland. Of all the countries I visited in Europe, Denmark easily had the highest number of underrated roller coasters. In the original list, I glossed over a handful of coasters in other European countries, but today any European coaster you will see on this list is in Denmark. Draukong is an intimate family inverted coaster that gets some flack for being a rough ride. Now admittedly, I was taken back by its shakiness, I wasn't really expecting it, but if you were able to look past that, it's one of the best family coasters I've ridden. Part of the reason I say that is because it's almost too intense to be considered one. Draukong pulls some serious forces on those turns and helixes. It's got a bunch of theming, lap bar only trains, and a diverse layout. Certainly one of the most overlooked intimates I've been on. Number 10, Bullet at Selva Mexica. Located in Guadalajara, Mexico, we devoted a stop to the city solely for a ride on Bullet. This is the only portable shuttle loop coaster ever built by Schwarzkopf. It was meant to be taken apart and rebuilt at various fun fairs in Europe, which it did back in its early years, but over time it's found its way to some permanent amusement parks like Selva Mexica, where it's been going strong since 2013. Bullet makes this list not just for being an elusive coaster credit that not many people have been on, but it's also a genuinely great ride. Due to its compact footprint, the forces are really quite intense and the near misses you get with the station are really scary. If there is a downside with this ride, it's got nasty head restraints that actually crunch you down into your seat throughout the ride. But I'm able to look past that because it's got a fantastic sequence of elements. Bullet remains my favorite Schwarzkopf coaster I've ever ridden. Number 9, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. When RMC debuted their prototype Raptor layout at Six Flags Fiesta Texas and California's Great America, enthusiasts couldn't believe the pacing. These rides were non-stop from beginning to end and super intense. Then they came out with a larger scale Raptor that would be a viable investment capacity wise for a larger park. What they came up with was a great layout with great forces but not as crazy of pacing. That really turned a lot of people off and for the first year of Jersey Devil's operation it received nothing but disappointing reviews by enthusiasts. Occasionally you'd get some people telling you not to listen to the criticism and because I really wanted to like this ride I went in with expectations somewhere in the middle. In spring 2022 I finally got to ride it and I was thoroughly impressed. Even 
more so because the park had finally managed to tune the mid-course brake run properly to ensure an equally strong second half to the first half. This ride has much more elongated elements than the prototype Raptors, but that doesn't mean they aren't good fun. There's still so much to love about this layout, and I'm glad more and more enthusiasts are coming around to that. Number 8, Intimidator at Carowinds. Often mocked and called Intremidator, the ride does not have the most favorable reputation amongst coaster enthusiasts. But personally, I have no idea why. Yes, I get that the ride's nickname implies that there's a stupid amount of trim breaks, but none of them really hurt the pacing all that much. Certainly no more than any other BM hypercoaster, in my opinion. The ride still has spectacular airtime, great forces, and it runs extremely smooth as well. That was probably the one thing that surprised me the most about this ride. Most BM hypers are generally smooth but have that BM vibration to it, while not Intimidator. Maybe I just caught this one on a good day, but I wrote it tons of times and got off thinking the same thing every time. Number 7, Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers. Yes, it's true, a Vekoma SLC made my list. But this isn't any SLC, this is by far the greatest one ever built. Where most are rough and uncomfortable rides, Great Nor'easter has received upgrades that prove that the layout can make for a great ride experience. Through a full retracking with smoother track and new trains with vest restraints, it's both impossible to get headbanging and smooth enough for your grandma to ride. Maury's words, not mine. I call out every park with an SLC to do what the Maury's family did to their own ride. Not only would the world be a much better place, but the SLC would no longer be hated and would instead be praised like this one is. Number 6, Uvalin at Jura Summerland. We talked about Wavebreaker, and I said the Intamin Straddle Coaster was pretty underrated as a whole. Well, if you enjoy that coaster, Uvalin will blow you out of the water like it did for me. Like Draukong in the same park, Uvalin is considered a family coaster, but maybe a little too intense for that. It begins with a slower launch and some tame turns and hills. This is pretty much just the warm-up, but once you get to the second half, this thing feels like a bat out of hell. The pacing is unbelievable, and you cannot process what's going on. That isn't to mention the fact that Jura Summerland took the time to theme and landscape this coaster, making it a terrific overall experience. Uvalin is easily one of the most underrated roller coasters in Europe. Number 5, Sandy's Blasting Bronco at Nickelodeon Universe. Located at New Jersey's American Dream Mall, Nickelodeon Universe is a newer park that opened in 2019, not long before the COVID shutdowns. With it came four new roller coasters, the standout of which being a huge Gerstlauer Eurofighter called TMNT Shell Razor. But there was another coaster all the way in the back of the park that sat idle and would not open until after the COVID restrictions were lifted in late 2020. Even though we're now in 2023, a lot of people, and especially those from out of state who visited this park, have only done so right as they opened. Either that, or when they visited, Sandy's Blasting Bronco was closed. This ride has been a maintenance nightmare for the park, as lots of intimates tend to be. But I'll tell you, if you catch this thing running, it's a serious rush. Some of the fastest accelerating LSM launches out there, incredibly whippy inversions, a mix of positive forces and hang time, honestly Sandy's is such a great ride. When I first rode it in 2021, I said it was my favorite ride in the park, and while TMNT Shell Razor has grown on me with a revisit in 2022, Sandy's Blasting Bronco is still a very underappreciated coaster. Number 4, Lena at Bear Up Summerland. Gerslauer only ever built two launch coasters that don't fall under the Eurofighter or Infinity model. These are Anubis the Ride at Plopsaland in Belgium and Lena at Bear Up Summerland in Denmark. This is a super punchy LSM coaster that seems too fast for its own good, and I love that about it. You get some insane ejector airtime on the top hat, camelback, and all entries into each mid-course brake run. It's also got two fluid inversions and an ultra-forceful launch at the start. My only knock are the restraints and dull finale, but this coaster is an outstanding surprise in every other way. Number 3, Coney Island Cyclone at Luna Park. It's weird that I have to put what is arguably the most famous coaster in the world on this list. Many mistake this for being an old rickety wooden coaster with just its fame going for it. But in actuality, and especially with recent retracking and modifications, the Cyclone is an incredible ride. This coaster has a nice long ride time filled to the brim with powerful airtime and sustained lateral forces. The lack of seat dividers basically force you to flop around in your seat if you're not riding with someone, and it's one of the most hilarious experiences you can get on a coaster. Something that also surprised me was how remarkably smooth this ride was. Considering it opened in 1927, a lot of parks could learn a thing or two by how Luna Park and Zamperla are maintaining this art piece of a coaster. At number 2 is Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. I feel so dumb for leaving this ride off the last list. Fahrenheit is a coaster I've ridden one time in my life, but from that one ride I've had on it, it's among the most underrated coasters I've ever been on. It rides sort of similar to Maverick at Cedar Point, which is a ride that gets a hell of a lot more love than this thing does. Rather than launches, Fahrenheit has a vertical lift tilt and beyond vertical drop, which reminds me of a Gerslauer coaster. I guess the best way I'd describe this ride is if a Eurofighter and Maverick had a baby. It's a smooth, whippy coaster with a terrific layout, and it deserves so much more love than it gets. Now finally, coming in at the number one spot is Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. It's no secret that I find this ride to be incredibly underrated. I talk about it all the time, and I think it's one of the best coasters B&M has ever built, let alone the best hyper coaster I've ridden from them. For me personally, I think it's crazy that this is even compared to Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, which is often considered to be the best B&M hyper in America. You know, this is coming from someone who enjoys Mako very much, but Goliath is just on a whole other level. It's got a terrific first half with great sustained airtime on the Camelbacks and the best turnaround section B&M has ever built. Often 
referred to as the toilet bowl, this element gives great airtime at its peak and piles on the positives as you funnel down towards the ground. Once in the second half, Goliath cranks things up further with some smaller hills giving Borderline sustained ejector airtime. No other BM hyper that I've ridden can compare to this ride's pacing, particularly due to the lack of a mid course brake run and its forces as well. It's just amazing. Goliath takes the cake as one of the most underrated coasters I've ever ridden, and along with Fahrenheit, it's one of two coasters that inspired me to make a video talking about 15 more of the most underrated coasters I've been on. Stay tuned because next up is a list of more overrated coasters I've ridden. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this extension. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe to Coaster Dash for more content like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.